Good evening, Facebook, and welcome to Deep Conversations and Transformations. My name is Lynette, and my intention behind these interviews is that everyone involved positively transforms and we raise our awareness through conversations. So tonight I'm joined by Lee Fitzpatrick, who is the founder of Outlaw Social, which is a 90-day marketing campaign agency. Now there is Lee. Let me see if I can get you on, Lee. It didn't work last time. We're doing business to business this time, so I'm not sure if it works or not. If not, we'll go on to my private page. Oh, you're there. It works. Hi. How are you doing? Does it sound okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. How are you? Good. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Perfect. Yeah, all good. Brilliant. Amazing. So we're business to business today. I'm just trying to out, see what happens. Wow. Yeah. Nice one. Nice one. So... My intention is always is to, you know, raise people's awareness and really help people to feel quite positive and make, maybe make changes. So what's your intention tonight coming on here, Lee? Um, so I th I, well, one of the main things I wanted to chat through is, uh, so we, it was maybe about, it was almost a year ago, I think we spoke last time. Time just Was it flagged. a year ago? Aye, time, well, Amazing. almost, something like that. Yeah. Um, but so you, you you know my story, you've heard bits of my story quite well, but what I've never really spoke about is how how the struggles can evolve into like your biggest strengths. I think that's that's what I'm trying to get across. Um yep. but just to be my intention tonight is just to be vulnerable, um and just authentic and transparent. You know me. Um I like I like to I just like to be as honest as possible. I think that's really important. So if I can share yep. some some uh, transparency tonight then be be a positive a bonus for me thank you well thank you for coming on and giving me your time tonight so you know you and i met through our love of personal development right yeah yeah a few years back and it's something that we both are very passionate about and when we get together we have these deep conversations so you know Let's start with what is it that you what is it you do? Tell us about your agency so that anyone out there watching can get a better idea. Sure. So, um, so I run a business called Outlaw Social. Um, for anyone watching, in short, that's a it's a social media agency, digital marketing agency, and we I guess we the reason I set up the business was to try try and help business owners cut through the crap when it came to digital mm -hmm. marketing. I think people are a bit scared of, of social media for business purposes, um, for digital marketing. A lot of people that I spoke to just really, they've either had a bad experience or they just didn't really understand how positive marketing can be. Yeah. So I, just, I wanted to set up a business that could help other businesses transform and, and grow and and just play a part in accelerating that growth. So I set the I set Outlaw Social up about yeah, just about twelve months ago. So probably yeah. near yeah, it was probably around the time that we last it's... done our last interview. So it's been a yeah. it's been a crazy twelve months, but it's going it's going really well. Yeah. Amazing. So good. you know we we had some questions come through. So we'll start with those and then we can go a wee bit deeper. So somebody cool. asked, like, what advice do you wish you had had when you started? Because you've been doing businesses for years, right? And in your bio, you shared a lot and vulnerably. So a way back, you've been doing businesses for about a decade now. Yeah. What do you wish you had known 10 years ago? Um, oh, I wish I had knew a that lot. question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, loads. Um, but I think I wrote about this recently. I think one of the, one of the biggest lessons I've learned is that it's just not possible. So we can wish to know everything at the start when we set up, when yeah. we first start out or start a business, whatever. But actually, there is real value in going through the motions and through the trenches and learning as you go. Because I think if someone just gave me all the tools 10 years ago, yeah. it just... I, it, I just I wouldn't be the person that I am now. And I think the lessons that I've learned, the mistakes I've made are just so valuable to me now in terms of business. Um, yeah. the, the, the conversations I can have, the, the confident, confidence I can have when I'm pitching clients and dealing with staff and mainly solving problems. Like that's a massive mm. thing. That's 
I mean, that's what I spend most of my days doing is just solving problems. Um, yeah. And, and I just had to learn that. So I think probably the biggest lesson for me is just staying in your own lane and, mm. and just, just becoming a problem solver and reveling in that problem solving. Um, that's definitely made me the business person that I am today. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a great answer. You know, if we sometimes if we do too much, we might not get got started. And sometimes you've just got yeah. to go for it, right? And knowing that you're not going to be perfect. Yeah. You know, it's like when I started this business, I'd, I decided to create a meditation class, but not one that was out on the market, just something that I wanted to go to. So I thought, you know, if I want to go to it, other people might want to come to it. And I kind of just created this class out of nothing. So, you know, if I'd questioned it too much i just wouldn't have done it so yeah and you I just have to go for it don't you 100 percent. and i think you, there's never going to be the perfect moment and i think never I, you know what i also think is quite good is a little bit of naivety is mm. actually it can be really positive um because i can remember you know when i set up my first business the the, the building business that i had I can remember just being super confident and a lot of it was misplaced. You know, I was just yeah. like, you know, I'm going to set up this business. I'm going to get a van. I'm going to find customers and who, you know, who cares? And everyone was telling me to, you know, you need to, you need to follow the process, take your time, you know, wait six months. But I just went for it. And even though being naive can have its downsides, I think there is a, there's a bit of a positive in there. <laughs> of course never... there is. Yeah, totally. Totally, I think that's, and, and I think both both of us have. There's probably been an, an element of that, but you go for it, and then you realise that it's possible. There are customers. Yeah, and the thing is, you just, I think, you know, you just have to go, like, trust yourself, and know that whatever happens in the business that you're creating, if you decide to like to do something and it doesn't go as planned, know that you can handle any challenge. Yeah. You know. Totally, totally. and I can. think. Yeah, totally. And being in business, it's just like life. Being in business is just one challenge. It's just solving one problem after the other continuously. Yeah. So I think if I think being in business re re requires quite a strong problem solving capability. And mine has developed over the years. But I think if you can solve problems, you've got a really good chance of, uh, of having a successful business. Yeah, sleep. Yeah. I love that. So what drives you to be a business owner, especially when dealing with challenges? Like what keeps you going, Lee, somebody's asked. Um, so when it comes to, well, let's talk about problem solving again. Every yeah. day is, <laughs> is, is and this is it's really simple stuff, but every day for me comes down to, I've got a list of problems and I'm probably going to have another 10, 20 problems that come on, like onto that list at some point during yep. the day and I think if if we were to if I was to get overwhelmed with that and let negative thoughts or fear or or self-doubt um take over I would just you know I would just seize up and I would stop working um yeah but that's not to say that I don't have like I, I'm I, I tackle fear and self-doubt every single day I've just built up processes to be able to to tackle them head on and I think mm -hmm. one of the big things for me is when a negative thought comes in to my yeah. head now I, I've got a lot better at kind of just like acknowledging it catching it yeah and then and then kind of questioning it so saying is so what is this thought you know it might be that a client's decided they're not working with us anymore yeah so that you know yeah. that that could feel like the end of the world but actually if you if you just catch it, you let it come in and just mm -hmm. kind of what I try to do is just observe it and kind of give it a bit of a reality check. Do you know, just say, is this the end of the world? What are the positives and the negatives that can come from this? Yeah. And if, if there's an opportunity, I try and replace that thought with a more positive one. Um, because that sort of thing, first thing in the morning, can ruin your whole day and actually yeah. can end up ruining your whole week or month uh, if you let it. But I think just, just, yeah, just giving thoughts a bit of a reality check. Yeah, I like to been, think of, yeah, of it, like becoming a detective, becoming a, de a detective of your own thoughts 
All because right. half the time we're not really conscious of what's going on up there until we decide, like, let's really look in and tune into the thoughts that I'm having. Yeah. Because our thoughts, you know, create how, basically lead to how we feel. And if we've got shit thoughts going on, we're going to feel shit. Yeah. And it's just about right. replacing those thoughts with powerful thoughts, like you're saying, finding yeah. the opportunity and then just changing them and feeling a lot stronger and more energized. And I think I think if people if people are still at a stage where they're they're kind of on autopilot and they've not yet started to acknowledge those, like actually even think about their thoughts. Again, I think for me it's been the past three, four years that it's been a, a constant evolution of three years ago I started to realise, you know, what are these thoughts? Like yeah. why am why why am I letting why are these dominating my life? And that awareness was kind of the start of of a self-development journey for me and I still feel like I'm at the start of it like I still feel that every day is a challenge and I'm sure for most people every day is a challenge even if they acknowledge their thoughts it's still really hard to to replace them with positive ones but I think habit oh are you still there I, I think paused oh there yeah. paused go, go pause, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is, you know, it is something that, you know, it's going to take a few years to really, maybe till the rest of your life, to really get yeah. a, like, grip on these thoughts. But definitely the more that you do it, the quicker you get at replacing those thoughts, those negative thoughts with more powerful yeah. ones. Yeah. But the awareness, it's key, right? The awareness allows us to feel more powerful because when we're aware of what's actually going on, then we have, you know, they, we're able to control our thoughts and change them. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Really Amazing. Powerful. Some so someone has asked <laughs> someone who's a dear friend of you and me. Do you appreciate how far you have come when you have down days? You're amazing. Oh wow! How <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, oh, that's a that's a tough one because I'm I'm so like I say, I'm still on a learning journey, and for me, I'm still my my worst critic. And okay. that's, that's, that's one of the things that I, I've got a lot better at, but I've still yep. got, a, and I think I've got a lifelong journey towards really, really conquering that and, and kind of just believing in myself. Um, but I think, I think um, if we take today, for example, so um, today I was meant to get up. So one of my disciplines that I've been working on for a while I've been trying to get back into consistently as exercise yeah so t today I, I set the alarm for half past five um was going to go to the gym at 6 a.m heard the most horrendous rain outside when I woke up and I, I managed to talk myself out of it and that could have that could have really ruined my day but um mm. I had another couple of bad things so actually I made a bad decision because I was quite tight for time so I, I went to Subway yeah. and got a a sandwich and it was horrible like it was just disgusting um but actually if i look at the whole day i managed to get some admin done for the business i managed to um go see my dog i managed to take rihanna to south queensbury she was doing something for our charity and then i managed to commit to come on here tonight so Boom. For, for me it's about balance so like in every yeah. day there are negatives and positives and i just tried to have more more positives and if I can look back on a day and and try and try and hone in on the good things that happened I think that that can really set me up for the next day because I kind of need that boost to get get that energy back for the next day or the week ahead or or whatever it is um but that that works for me just I just focus in on the positives and yeah. and acknowledge the negatives because the negatives that happened are think are disciplines that I'm trying to break or build, um, yeah, so just a, a mixture of all of that. And you know, you said there, you know, I, I'd like talking about believing in yourself. So yeah. like Kirsty who shared that question and me, like we believe in you, Lee, Yeah. right? Yeah. And I cannot wait till you believe in you because when you truly believe in you, like I can't imagine how powerful you're gonna be. Yeah, I'm excited for it as well. <laughs> How does it feel when I say I believe in you, Lee? Well, you know it feels tough. For me, that's a, <laughs> that's a that's a real challenge. But again, it's getting 
is getting easier to bear. And that, you know, the powerful exercise that we've done in some of our group stuff, we're looking in the mirror. Yep. That's just powerful, but how challenging that can be. For me, the first time when I've done that, to look in the mirror and say, like, I love you, you are enough, yep. was like, I could feel myself choking up, like, oh, I just want to disappear. But the more you do it, like, the easier, easier it becomes. It and does, yeah, mirror work. So it starts amazing. with mirror work and then it becomes mirror play because we start to like ourselves, love ourselves and realise our potential. Now you talk about the throat area there and we hold yeah. so much emotion in our throat. We suppress yeah. so much over years. And you and I have talked about this before because I know that you are ready to share your story, which is why you're on tonight. Yeah. So tell yeah, yeah. me about you, like really releasing whatever's been stuck in your throat chakra and starting to talk your truth. Sure. Um, so I, I guess, so something I've, I've, like I said at the start, something I've been looking at in a lot of detail and, and been doing a lot of processing with is just why I am who I am and, and kind of why I act how I act. And some of the habits that I've bought, so kind of built along the way, and some of the scars that I've had from you know um, previous years or childhood and stuff, and some of I've yeah. started to acknowledge is some of the biggest struggles that I've had in life have came have actually they've developed and give me given me resilience and tools, and I've actually became my biggest strengths and. Only the past couple of years have I started to acknowledge just how like powerful a human being I am or I can be when I just yeah. let that when I accept that and let it flourish. Um, but I think um, so. I've been working with a, a kind of a coach to you know help me share my story, and it's been it's been quite it's been an interesting journey. And I'm doing a couple of um, a couple of talks at the end of the month, which I'm quite looking forward Amazing. to. Amazing. Um, so that'll be a big step for me, but. I think to really set the scene, I kind of have to go back to, I think to my childhood. Um, that's that's kind of where it all start started for me. So, kind of growing up. Um, so my dad wasn't really around. He he had an addiction and he spent some time in jail and mm. he just kind of took the wrong path in life. And a great person, but just went down the wrong the wrong route. Um, yeah. So I never really had much to do with, you know, I've seen him every now and then, but we never spent a lot of time together. Um, and then that kind of, what happened after that is I had um, a stepdad come into my life and I, people who are watching maybe have had step parents come into their life. Like that can be a challenge when someone new comes into your life. Um, I'm sure people will resonate. But um, what actually happened is my, my, my stepdad left my life and, pretty suddenly and never spoke to me again mm. and that that kind of so up until like early adult years I had never really had a kind of positive male role model to look up to and that yeah that was a that was a big challenge for me um but what I think was my saving grace um and someone I speak about quite a lot I don't know if I've told you this story but um when I came out of school, I had one job, and I've only ever really had one job before I went into, into business. <laughs> before and it, you it, became an entrepreneur. Aye, yeah. Um, just employed life just wasn't it for me. Um, but I, I came out of school, and I got given this opportunity by a guy called Vincent. I don't know if I've ever told you about this guy. You have taught me about Vincent. I, he sounds like I'm a going. legend. <laughs> aye, total, total legend. So he was this flamboyant, like really energetic, passionate Frenchman and he, he was my boss so he was the owner of this letting agency in Musselburgh and Vincent was kind of the one of the first male role models that one taught me about business and two just kind of had all the opposite char characteristics to the, the sort of previous male role models that I had in my yeah. life um, and Vincent was actually so after six months of working with Vincent he was he actually encouraged me to set up my business, my first business, which was the business that I ran for five years really successfully. Um, so just by opening myself up to that positive person, regardless of previous experiences that I had had, was just totally transformational for me. Um, 
yeah. and it just yeah it just gave me a confidence that I had never had before um and that that kind of it put me on a path of of actually huge success with my first business yeah. so really grateful for it yeah he, he I suppose in a way he changed the story of the story you had about men yeah. and being role models because you know you talk yeah. about the childhood and that's where all our programming comes from right whoever like it's not to blame our parents or to blame anyone the way that we've been conditioned you know our programming leads to our thoughts which we were talking about our yeah, thoughts yeah. lead to our feelings our feelings lead to our actions actions lead to results so if we are doing something in life right now and we're not quite happy with that area all we have to do is go back to the programming see where it's come from change the thoughts and start to you know take yeah. better actions in life because if there's something we don't know in life, we can definitely find out if there's a part of our life that isn't quite where we want it to be, it can be changed. We can, we have the power to transform that. Totally, totally. And I think that that's probably a really important part. As much as I've reflected back and, and kind of tackled my past and acknowledged it and processed it, it's really important to know that like, I'm not living in the past. Like I have, yeah. I have accepted it. I've learned from it and I value it, but I'm very much focused on living in the present and working towards my future. So um, I think that's a really important part. Um, I did, I was re I, I read an article yesterday just about those sort of conditioned beliefs. Yeah. Um, and I, it was phrases that um, parents or maybe my generation or your generation used to use and probably yeah. still do use. It was things like, money doesn't grow on trees and yes. I've, I've not got up one of one that I used to get was I've not got a pot to piss in um, <laughs> like, <clears throat> which is like the most ridiculous phrase but um, that, that's they're just conditioned beliefs that have been that have kind of came down the family tree yeah it's amazing well you'll know this because you you do a lot of studying and work in this like the impact that that phrase repeated over and over <laughs> can have on your future life and your ability to earn money, to, to, to be able to even deal with money. Um, yeah. It's just really powerful. But it's I find really it powerful. Funny. <laughs> it's funny, but I, I remember saying that to Elias, talking about like the old conditioned beliefs. And I said, you know, there's the saying, money doesn't grow on trees. And he was like, well, it's paper. So of course it grows on trees. I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, you talk about money mindset and you know, that's something I've been working on for a long time now. And it's funny because, you know, you mentioned in your bio that at one point you were in 70 grand's worth of debt when you were 24. Now that's a huge amount <clears throat> of debt. Like how did you transform your mindset to get out of that debt? Um, so that was that was difficult. But again, to, so to set the scene, <clears throat> um, we had just liquidated. So I had just liquidated that first business that I've just explained. Yeah. And um, after having this kind of amazing high, this trajectory of you know growth and um, lots of money around, lots of winning awards and you know a, a team, lots of great clients, we kind of reached our peak, and then. Mm the kind of carpet was swept from beneath our feet. So we had, we got some bad debt that clients, clients weren't just paying us. Um, but I went, I kind of spiraled down into a really bad place. Um, like I've explained before, I was in, you know, a, a really deep depression, felt really isolated um, and would spend literally weeks in my room just, not wanting to deal with the actual situation yeah. um, and I actually this is I, I remember really vividly and it's quite hard for me to speak about but I remember being down the beach like in that depressed state I can remember looking at the waves and it's the only time in my life that I've ever felt like this but I was and I, I don't know if anyone's ever felt so bad or so kind of helpless that they've questioned life mm. but that's what I was like I was looking at the waves and I was like can I go on like is like mm. should I go on and I think gradually over time it was lucky that I had supportive family so like I had my mom I had um, my mom's partner Tam I had my grandparents who were just incredible and I also had a 
you know, one or two friends who were really trying to get me out of the, the kind of downward spiral. And it's one of these inflection points, a bit like Vincent. Um, it was actually, my, I think it was my friend, Sean, who basically was like, I'm going to go see this personal trainer. Um, do you want to come along? And at this point, you know, I, I could hardly look at myself in the mirror. I was feeling overweight, like I was comfort eating, just felt terrible. But someone in me said, you know what, go along, get yeah. there. And I, it was horrible. Like I was dreading it, the anxiety. But I went to the I went to the personal training session with Sean and I was introduced to a personal trainer at the time, a guy called Joss. And he was kind of the, I was another really positive role model because he was this just passionate guy. Like he really loved his job. You could tell that, like he actually wanted to spend time with us and help us get fitter and healthier. Um, yeah. So we trained with him for months and months, and he he was the, he was so he was the inspiration that made me switch careers and train to be a personal trainer, which then led to you know the boot camps, helping hundreds of people, and then yep. opening the gym and helping thousands of people over a, a couple of years. Um, so it's just amazing how again thoughts and just I, I guess I maybe took a bit of responsibility you know someone in me mm. was like you need to stop this cycle you need to yeah go to the gym and that just changed everything instantly which was amazing that's amazing and also the, you know you mentioned these people in your life like when you have people encouraging you like that and getting it and just sort of picking you up a wee bit and believing in you when you don't believe in you it's key right yeah yeah, totally. <clears throat> totally. And I think even if you look at it on a smaller scale, so when we when we have an argument with, you know, our partners or friends or family, and we go into that kind of, we go into that ego state, or maybe it's child state, or we go into that place of fear. Mm. And some of the, th like some of the things that you, you argue about as an adult are so trivial. But I yeah. think if, you, if you've got a, a level-headed kind human there who can kind of cut through the crap and kind of almost well sometimes give you a bit of tough love or sometimes just be there that yeah. that can be like that can be the difference and for me I've been really lucky that I've had people who are just genuinely nice people who were willing to be there for me and I think if anyone's got those people it's important that as quickly as you can you realize that they are there for you because Mm. Yeah, because so my, my default used to be to push people out. So yeah. then the people that, that were there for me would be the first ones to get blocked out. Um, and that, well, that wasn't good for anyone. But and then you've got I've, people I've, like me that will not let you push out. <laughs> like, I, like, yeah, yeah, what? yeah, totally, totally. And, and I, that, that, that experience has allowed me to help other people who are still maybe struggling with with that sort of thing and that can be that that kind of just rock or just nice person who's there if needed um yeah so it's, it's definitely it's it's an experience that I've, I've yeah I, and you can recognize you know if you've been in those low places yourself you can recognize if someone else is there and you can give that hand to them but sometimes i think you just touched on it there it's like I remember going to my first really deep personal development experience seminar and the lady who runs that seminar is amazing, but she took no bullshit. And <laughs> she really like, she really pulled me up and got yeah. me to take responsibility. And I realized like how much I'd just been living in my own head. Yeah. And yeah, it was crazy. But by her just like no longer taking my bullshit that I was sharing, it was a big wake up call, <laughs> but yeah. I needed that. I needed that. I needed somebody to basically slap me around the face with our words to wake yeah. me up to how I had been acting and feeling. Yeah, definitely. And you, you can resist those people for so long, but eventually you're just like, they're right. Like I need, I need, <laughs> I need to shake myself and yeah. And, and, and just move on. Yeah, definitely. So your next big challenge is, tell us, you're doing a charity walk. 
Aye, yeah. So me, me and Rihanna, um, we're doing a, we're basically doing a trek into the Arctic Circle in the end of January. So we're raising m- money for the MS Society. So we yeah. we fly in, we fly into Rovaniemi. Um, we kind of acclimatise for a day, and then we trek into the Arctic Circle for three days and three nights. Um, just single file, pulling our sleds along, <laughs> pretty much pitch, pitch Wild. black. Um, really looking forward to it, but it's going to be cold. I think um, last year some of the trips were minus 40. Fuck. <laughs> um, aye, so, yeah. So, but, end of January. So, Lee, yeah. have you started to ask people for money yet? Well, I've, um, <laughs> you know, I've been struggling with this, not not fully. That's but why I'm bringing it up. That's why I'm bringing it up. I want you to be vulnerable on here tonight. And Love if it. you're not going to ask people for money, then I'll start the the campaign. <laughs> Brilliant. Yes, yeah. so we've um, we've raised eight percent of our target, so we've got oh, loads. To, we have got loads to go, but um, we've got a just given page. Um, we can maybe put it in the comments after. No, that no, be... maybe we will put it okay. in the comments it in after the... this. Because I don't yeah. even know about it and I don't know how to get my money to you. Right. You know, cool. like like my new money mindset is that I give 10% to charity every month of what I earn. So Brilliant. I need somewhere to put that. So can you put the link down below afterwards? Yes, I will do that. I've, got, it, it, I've got it written down, so I'll, uh, I'll do that. Because, Aye. you know, that is, I know that you've been you're not doing that at all. And I want to keep you accountable on that one. Yeah. Thank yeah? you. And, okay. you know, look at the impact that you're going to be making by going on this trip. Yeah, totally. I, yeah. Like, yeah. And like I know, impact. yeah, tell me, I mean, you, when I ask you, like, what you're doing all these things for, I always love your answer. So tell me, like, what the dream is. Like, with your business... <clears throat> What made you create this business? Because it's so in alignment now with, you know, your values and your vision. Tell us your why behind creating that so, business. Right, I actually done a shuffle of my, I kind of done a, an assessment of my life maybe about three months ago. So I, I was just like, yeah, I like to do a refresh. I like to be like, you know, where am I? Where am I going? Why am I doing things? And I've always, my family have always says, you're so curious. Why do you know just accept? Like, your life like why do you keep prodding and ask and that's just me that's who I am and I'm an entrepreneur I'm curious like I'm a problem solver but there's there's three kind of non-negotiables that I decided on three months ago um the, the first one was to to live in the present mm-hmm. and work towards the future um to make an impact in the world and I'll explain that in a second um, and be a good be a good human like those three things are my non-negotiables that's why I exist that's why I get up every yeah. morning um, I think so outlaw social I'm really lucky in that the skills I've developed in business over the past 10 years have accumulated and outlaw social is kind of it's almost like the child of those skills because what what outlaw social really allows me to do is accelerate the growth of amazing businesses that can make an impact on the world and something i'm really excited about is that i can so i can choose to work with amazing businesses because i've built up all this experience people are people trust me like I've retained integrity throughout my whole career and we're starting to get the opportunity now after a year in business, people are, you know, something I had to be quite realistic about when I set up this business is I was coming into a marketing sector with no real marketing credentials apart from I've set up businesses, I've scaled businesses, I'm creative, I'm strategic, I like to solve problems. So I was at a disadvantage um, and something I had to come to terms with was if some if I was in some a business's shoes and I was a managing director of a really great business and I was going to spend ten twenty thousand pound on a marketing campaign, it would be a risk for me to work with a business that's only a year old. Yeah. So there's, there's two routes I could have took with that. I could have 
pretended and put on this mask that, you know, we're a great business, we're fantastic, we're perfect, um, we've done all this amazing work. Or I could go down the transparent route and you know what route I'm going to go down. Like, I'm always going to try and be transparent. So yeah. it's been hard because we, we need to build a portfolio and we need to build trust and that's going to take time and I just kind of rush that. But what's really exciting is over the past couple of months, as we've refined our offering, we're starting to get, like, people are knocking on our doors that are kind of almost pretty much dream clients. Um, Amazing. So I'm quite excited for what the next 12 months look like. And the priority for me is just to do an amazing job, work with amazing businesses, and and try and make my mark on the world that way just now with the skills that I have. Um, yeah, but we're work like so we're we're building relationships with great businesses. You know, we've got like we've got recycling businesses that are doing an amazing job. We've got um, we've got one of Amazon's um, best selling uh, reusable bottles that we're in. Yeah, sorry, that's a cool company that we're in pitch stage with. Um, so like, I actually am living true to making an impact through our work. So. Um, yeah, we'll see see how that develops. But I'm re I'm so excited about it. It's it's cool, and you know the business that you have is amazing. And yeah, some of the clients that you showed me, like that one you're talking about, I'm like, you know, they're making positive impact on the planet, on yeah. humanity. Yeah. And you know, I know that is true to your heart is to make a you know leave this world a better place than you found it. I know that's one of your sort of you know your yeah. things. Yeah. Definitely. Which is why we're friends, right? <laughs> aye, yeah, I thought, yeah, aye, definitely. We're drawn towards each other like a lot of people in our in our circle. Um, and I suppose that's that's the second thing. So one of my non-negotiables is to be be a good human. Um, that's a real challenge. Like, that's a really tough one, I think, in business because a lot of people in business are operating for that, that kind of ego state that they've got that mask on and it can be really challenging, like it's really hard to identify who, like who are, like who are good humans and who yeah. maybe don't have the best intentions. And then what you've got to do is you've got to balance that up with, okay, I now need to make a moral decision on, I maybe know this person or business isn't, doesn't have the same values as me but they're also willing to pay. And by paying, that means I can survive and I can grow the business and I can reinvest profits. And that's, I think, I think the world, so that everyone across the globe is, is battling with this just now, whether mm. they know it or not, it's what is more important, profit or, you know, the planet or being a good human. And I think, well, you'll know this, so you'll be able to feel it, I'm sure, but it's going to become so much more prominent in the next next 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, it is, you know, obviously there's that, you know, the money thing and then somebody's values. But, you know, if you're working with somebody that your values are not in alignment, then that yeah. energy, you feel it, and it just usually doesn't work so well. It drains you, yeah. Yeah, totally. and it's, you know you know, you, you won't fit with everyone. Yeah. And I, and I think th you have to be brave enough to sometimes say no to something that's not going to work for you. Yeah, and I think, and I, so on that point, I think you might have experienced this, I'm sure you have. If you're thinking something, the other person is most likely also thinking that. So if you've got a really bad feeling about a business relationship, yeah. The best, the best thing to do is to just pick up the phone and have an honest conversation. And actually, this happened really recently with um, a friend of mine's, um, and we decided not to work together um, just because the val like the values were misaligned. Um, but an honest conversation retained the relationship kept us as friends, and we just yeah. decided that it wasn't right for us to work together. And I think. To, to just you know to just cut straight to the point and just have a really heartfelt conversation can solve so many problems that's amazing it's like the book you know the four agreements they talk about don't make assumptions and, right. and not making assumptions the only thing that we can do to get over that is to ask courageous questions like wow. 
Well, How many times do we not even ask the people that we love exactly what we want to ask them because the yeah. fear and yeah. how about we start getting courageous and just asking people like yeah. things we want to know because when we make assumptions it's so disempowering we create these crazy stories about people and situations that are not true they're just coming from our imaginations or yeah. you know things that have happened in the past so let's get more courageous with asking questions Love it. And, you know, if you ask from your heart and with good intention, then, you know, you can clear things up if you make a mistake. But we only live once. What's the point in holding back? Let's just start asking stuff. And I love that you had a conversation with your friend because totally. so often we don't do that and we just let things fizzle out and we think, oh, it doesn't matter. But energetically, it does. We feel it. We hold on to that stuff. And I think, so, like, if you think of the last time you had a, you had a win-win conversation where you've you've tackled someone head on and there's yeah. been a positive outcome and how that left you you like how you felt after that. Well, it's just you feel amazing. Like yeah, you, you feel do. like you can tackle the world. Um so I think aye, more of that, definitely. Definitely more win wins. Like let's yeah. all win, right? What are we so yeah. competitive for? Why are we all against each other? We're I, know. I believe we are all connected. We're all the same. We're all brothers and sisters, you know. We all have good hearts. Sometimes, you know, stuff's just happened. So I think as well, always trying to see everyone you meet, like knowing that maybe if they're showing up in a certain way, try and think about what they've been through that day. We never know what yeah. people are going through. Yeah, totally. I've, um, I've definitely seen myself looking a lot more from other people's perspectives and it just makes such a massive difference it makes you think before you speak and that can just be so powerful as well <laughs> yeah and that takes you honestly the four agreements is amazing and it's you know be impeccable with your word because our word is like the greatest tool we have yeah. and we can use it for good or yeah. sometimes we can use it like poison definitely so let's be impeccable with our words. So, oh, you know, it's been amazing having you on here, Lee. Is there anything that we've not covered tonight that you wanted to talk about? Um, not, not really. Um, I think we've, we've covered loads of amazing stuff. Um, this, uh, this is always really good for me. Like, I love our chats and hopefully it adds value to other people. But it's yeah. always... It's, <clears throat> what always hits home with me is it's always really... It's really quite healing, sharing with people. Um, yeah. So I think just I'd love to encourage people to share more. Like just find find people that they can connect with on a like a deeper level and, and just share because it it just it's just brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, because I say this always in my classes. You know, I'm like whoever shares, they will heal, but so will everyone else listening because. We're all going through the same stuff. It might just look slightly different, but we can all relate. And when someone speaks from their heart, like you have tonight, vulnerably and authentically, that helps everyone else heal. So, you know, thank you for coming on here and being so vulnerable and gorgeous and authentic and just letting it out. It's all right. It's not a problem. Really enjoyed it. Let's meet in another year and get out whatever is going on. <laughs> Hi, I'm excited to see see what happens in the next 12 months, definitely. Yeah, and I always say that to people like, you know, if anyone does ever want to come on this interview, then come on because everyone has a story to share. Everyone has like a perspective that could help raise consciousness. So, you know, it's open to everyone. And thank you to everyone who has listened tonight. Lee, please share your business website okay. and your charity GoFundMe page. Cool, not a problem. I will do that straight away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do it. It's your actions for tonight. Okay. Pleasure. All right. Thank you for being on here and I'll see you soon. Perfect. Thanks, Lynette. Speak soon. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.